Hello everyone. Today I'm going to introduce a new feature that released by MongoDB uh, during the summer of 2024 and that is called the Natural Language Query. Uh, so basically it is also powered by the generative AI or the large language models where we can type our queries in natural language and MongoDB will convert by using large language model to convert our uh, natural language queries into either uh, document queries all the aggregation pipelines. Um, this function currently is available on MongoDB campus, so you can download the free MongoDB campus. And, and also you can connect with your cluster, uh, either a free one or the paid one. Uh, you can use any data set. So for example, you can use those sample data set, uh, like uh, weather data or the Airbnb data. Or if you have the data that you collected by yourself, for example, um, I have a bunch of the Twitter data that I collected uh, yesterday and also today, uh, where I have like 1.3 thousand uh, tweets uh, talking about the US uh, election. Uh, we know that there's uh, three weeks uh, until the vote, so uh, election is a hot topic. So. Uh, if you are interested in collecting Twitter data, uh, you can check my uh, data mining uh, tutorials or the data mining uh, class. Uh, so let's first let's look at the data. So uh, MongoDB organizes all the data in JSON document, and also Twitter API retains uh, the collected tweets in JSON documents as well. So basically, we have two uh, keys uh, in addition to the ID. So we have the tweet key. And we also have the user key. So in the tweet key, we have some public metrics like the number of times this tweet has been retweeted, liked, replied, etc. Uh, it also has entities, so like the mentioned users, uh, annotations um, uh, that uh, included in that single tweet. We also have the tweet ID, uh, when the tweet being created, uh, the language, the user ID, and also text. So uh, I collect tweets talking about elections. So most of the tweets are now talking about uh, elections. Uh, in the user key, we have the username. We have the number of their followers and also number of the following accounts uh, and also username, etc. Uh, so because it's a JSON document, so it's semi structured. So not all the tweets contain exactly the same information. So for example, in the second tweet, uh, it has an image, so that's why we have this image that in the entities uh, object uh, where we have the URL of that image. Um, and for the users, so it also has like, for example, a different information like um, this user uh, provided the location in the user profile. So that's why we can see the, the user's information that the location information in, uh, within that uh, user object. All right, uh, so those are the uh, Twitter data. Again, uh, if you are interested, you can check my data mining class, learn how to collect tweets. All right, so before we move on to the natural language, so let's first let's talk about the, the basic queries. So uh, in MongoDB, we can do a document query. So that's we uh, type the query here. Uh, so this is more like, like Slack uh, statement in SQL, so you, you define the filters, and you can define which uh, fields will be retained in the results. You can also sort the, the results uh, based on the value in the field. You can also limit the number of the fields that are being retained. So uh, for example, uh, let's do a, a very simple query. Let's say uh, we want to find out the um, dot language that equals English. So, so this is a filter that where the tweet dot language equals English. And in the project, we just want to see, okay, we want the the tweet text to be retained. And we we can also filter like say so we want to filter based on Twitter dot public matrix. We want based on the like account. So the public mention where your like account is negative, which means we're using the descending order. Uh, let's just provide our 
query back. So tweet dot language equals English. Okay. And we also want to see that the top 10. So the most liked uh, tweets. Uh, so we, we will return the tweet dot text only. Um, Okay, I have a typo here, so that's colon. Okay, so let's run this analysis. So let's find this analysis. Okay, so now you can see this is the most liked tweets, um, and that is in English, and also uh, we have the top 10 most liked tweets. Okay, uh, if you want to see the uh, the public matrix and we can also do the, bring that one to the project so we're colon one and also find okay so this is the most uh, favorited or liked tweets that has been liked like uh, 47 uh, times and that's the second one uh, 15 times uh, and also this one has been like uh, seven times all right, uh, so that is a, a very simple example of the document query. Uh, we can also do aggregations. So for example, aggregation means that so we are building different uh, stage. Uh, the, the, the output of the first stage is the input of the second stage. So for example, let's add one stage uh, where we are going to use a match. It's, uh, it's just like a... Uh, uh, a filter. So here, let's we are going to find. Oh, let's do a sim query. So let's say tweet dot language equals English. So now you can see now the output of the this stage is that all the tweet that is in English. And now we can do a count. So we can see the number of tweets in English. Uh, so you can see that. The number of tweets that I have in English is 1,275, okay? Uh, in total, I have 1.3 thousand tweets, all right? So that's a, um, a very simple demonstration of the aggregation pipeline. Uh, you can also analyze the schema, uh, build indexes, uh, etc. All right, so uh, to be honest, uh, the MongoDB uh, query is a little bit complicated. Uh, so if you imagine that without those uh, graphic interface, so actually it's pretty hard to write a, a, a MongoDB uh, query, like either document query or aggregation pipelines. So that's why now we are going to introduce the, the natural language query. So that is, we are going to click generate query. Uh, we are using the natural language query, to, natural language to generate queries and also pipelines. Uh, it is free uh, now, at least. <laughs> uh, so, but it also it does require us to log into Mong to Atlas to enable. So, um, let's just log in to Atlas, which bring to this Mong uh, MongoDB website. So, I use my Google. So, I'm going to log in with my Google account. Okay. So now, uh, it is success. So after I log in with my uh, Google account to my uh, MongoDB Atlas. Uh, so now you can see I sign in with my account. So this is where you can just try to um, uh, do the queries in natural language. So for example, let's reset all the queries. So for example, um, let's do a same query. Let's see, find the most liked tweets in Okay, let's just do the first one. So find the most liked tweets. And we clicked generate. And now you can see this automatic generated uh, query. So it says it's, uh, it is using the public matrix dot like and the sort and with in, in the descending order. And also it, it also has defined a project where we will be able to see the text uh, ID and also the, the like count. So let's just run this one. Let's expand. Uh, you can see we get the same result. So it's pretty uh, accurate. Okay, so that's the second most uh, favorited uh, tweets. 
Okay, uh, let's try something that is uh, slightly uh, different. So for example, find the most popular Twitter users. Okay, uh, I know this is a very vain query. So there are several ways to measure the, the popularity of the Twitter users, either like the following um, counts or like uh, number of tweets that have been sent out, so it centers. Uh, so let's hit enter and let's see what is the query. All right, uh, so that's a return result. So you can see here uh, they are using the followers count, so user.publicmatrix.follower counts as a uh, as way to measure the popularity of the tweet users. Uh, they also set limit the top 10 most popular users. Uh, in the result, they're going to show us uh, the username and also all the other measures. So let's go ahead and find out the most popular users. Um, so that's the most popular user from my collected uh, data, where you can see it has this number of the follower accounts. And, and this, I believe, is the second popular user. So it, they also have a lot of followers. Okay, and let's also do another one. Say, like, find the top 10 most liked tweets and shows the uh, text only. Okay, so again, we don't need to tell, like, uh, the field name, like it's in the text field or uh, it's in the public metric field. So I think uh, AI is able to find out those fields that are in the Twitter document. So let's see, generate that query. So now you can see in the project, they are going to show us the text only and also ID. Uh, they are going to sort based on the like count in the Twitter.public matrix. And they're going to, uh, AI is also using the limit 10. So if they find, okay, so we can see the result. All right, and let's also ask another question. Let's see, uh, which user sent the most tweets? Okay, uh, so this is very nice. So, uh, so now you can see they switched from the document query into the uh, aggregation pipeline because they need to use uh, the sort function. So. So here we can see first we group the usernames. Uh, so for each single tweet, uh, the username will be added by one. So if the user sent out two tweets, the, the name will be two. Uh, the tweet account will be two. Uh, and also they sort, they sort by tweet account. And now we know that uh, from our uh, data set, and this user sent out four tweets and this user sent out three tweets. And finally, we find out the user that sent out the most tweets. Okay, so and that's a very nice uh, query, so, and also it's uh, also a very uh, accurate. Okay, um, again, this is a very, very complicated query, to be honest. However, you can see we just can type out the, uh, the query in natural language, and that makes everything extremely simple. Okay, uh, so this time we're going to see, uh, we're going to ask how many tweets posted today. Uh, let's see whether or not AI is able to understand that, that question. So uh, first AI has to understand, okay, what day is it today? And also find out the field that uh, to compare the time and also return the result. Uh, first it is, okay, uh, that's very nice. So uh, it is an aggregation uh, pipeline problem, so you can see that they are able to find out the day of today, uh, and also uh, they compare this result, which is uh, th th uh, this field that is tweeted out created at, which is greater than uh, today, the day of today, October 16th, uh, less than October 17th. And now we can see we have this number of tweets that were posted today, which is correct because uh, the most tweets that I collected was posted today. All right, uh, let's also ask another question. Let's say that what are the popular hashtags? Okay, 
so this I think is also an aggregation uh, pipeline. Uh, all right, so this time they didn't um, contain any result. And so they are going to try to find out antis.notation.type, which equals hashtag. And apparently, uh, they are using the wrong field because a hashtag is another uh, subfield that in the entities. So let's rewrite this query. Let's say in the tweet entities uh, field. All right, so what are the public hashtags in the tweet entities uh, field? So uh, so this time we give it a more uh, clear um, instructions to tell which field you should check. So let's, let's just retry it. OK, um, this time it worked. Uh, entities annotations. All right, uh, I think they are still using the annotations, uh, but so that's the most popular annotation is Trump, followed by FBI, Georgia, uh, Donald Trump, Harris, etc. So, um, what's more popular hashtags in the tweet entity field? Okay, hashtag. Okay, search. Okay, so let's see if this time it can work. So I think I I won't give it to be more specific. So search a tweet entity hashtag field. Okay. All right, uh, here we go. So so now they are uh, using the right hashtag. So that is Twitter dot entities dot hashtags. Uh, so this first they unwind that field because it is a list. And then uh, the group, uh, the hashtags, so that is tags, hashtag dot tag. Uh, and then the sort, so that you can see uh, this is the most popular one. BCPLI, uh, I have no idea what that is. The second most popular hashtag is Bitcoin, followed by new uh, election, okay, prod blue, X spaces, okay. Uh, all right, so yeah, so looks like so they sometimes they cannot give you the exactly what you want, so you have to be more specific. Or uh, you can either try it multiple times, or like uh, provide more specific instructions. For example, like uh, in this case, I I tell AI like search a specific field, and now they they are able to do the job. Okay, so let's try it one more time. So let's see where are the user come from. Okay, so we want to search the, the user field. And see, so now they are going to group the user locations and and then use a sort. We can see most of the users, they don't provide any uh, location information. And we have 26 that is provided a location as the United States, 24 USA, 11 Texas, 8 Canada, another seven taxis, uh, six Washington, six New York, and we have six that uh, from the Earth, okay, and five from Florida. All right. Uh, so now when uh, we have those queries, so for example, we created the query from the the natural language, and we can export the results. So you can either export the data. Or you can also export the queries. So for example, if you choose export to language, so this will convert the queries that into different programming language. So if I choose export to language, you can see on the left side, those are the uh, MongoDB query language. And, uh, and on the right side, those are the Python code. So for example, if you have a, a notebook, that you want to analyze the data and you want to query the exactly uh, documents like tweets, um, you can just copy paste those queries at, from the campus and into your Python code. Uh, so I think this uh, really uh, can help, especially for example, if you want to query the, the data 
uh, before you analyze the tweets, like uh, in the past we use OpenAI to process some tweets. Uh, if we don't want to process the entire data set, uh, we can go to campus, or we can uh, put our uh, write the queries in natural language to find out the, the exact tweets that we want. And then uh, we can convert, export the query either pipelines all the document queries into Python. And then we just copy paste that Python code back to our Python notebook. And then we can use the other APIs or the other tools to analyze the exactly specific documents that we are interested. Uh, I think it's a pretty nice function. So uh, compared to uh, during the summer when I tested this natural language query, I think today, uh, the query is doing far way better than I initially tested in in August. Um, it might be because that the 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 gen uh, the gentian AI or the large language models uh, has have been updated. Okay. Um, next, so uh, if you want to disable the, the AI uh, query, so you can go to settings and you can go to artificial intelligence. You can just disable that. So, uh, or you can just log log out your uh, your um, account. Okay, so you can disable that if that's what you want. Uh, the reason I want to show this is because, uh, as you can tell, that uh, when we are querying the data, AI actually is analyzing the data, so uh, they can access the data, and otherwise they will not be able to find out, okay, so that's a user location, uh, to use the user location field to answer our questions. So so they can access our data. So keeping that in mind, so if you are using a natural language query uh, on MongoDB, uh, the natural language models will analyze and access the data. Uh, so that's why you can check their uh, online documents, so you can see the natural language query utilize the Microsoft OpenAI as a current provider. So uh, you need to follow your your companies or your uh, university's uh, data policies, see if you can allow OpenAI um, to access your data, especially if your data are uh, sensitive. 